Autobots, more than meets the eye. Autobots waits their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us. For this special figure showcase, we're going to be looking at the 1984 Series 1 Decepticon Soundwave. I've been really looking forward to redo this video, and especially now I've got a Takara version, I can show you some of the many differences between that and the Hasbro version. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a look at him in both of his modes, help you decide how you want to display him. We're also going to have a look at the different accessories and things that came in the very differently packaged Hasbro and Takara versions of this figure. It's also the same as if we look at the step below, the very differently packaged Hasbro and Takara versions of the cassettes. So we'll discuss them a little bit more in a second. But first and foremost, let's talk about this guy. And I want to dedicate this video, especially to Sean, who comments all the time on my comic videos, especially as SJH Photo. It's a pleasure to do this for you, and I hope you enjoy it, sir. So there he is right in front of us, 1984, first released as a Transformer. Now, when I say that, and I don't usually discuss things like this, but with this figure, I've got to really, especially when you see all the accessories that come with the Takara version. So pre-Transformers, there was a Japanese toy line known as Micro Change, and it basically focused on literally robots in disguise. So things that were everyday, things around the house, like your Walkmans, like your um, Megatron was obviously a gun, Perceptor was obviously a microscope, things like that. It focused mainly on them. Not the Diaclone Range, which was the Autobot cars, but on them. So this is where he basically came from. And of course, great idea by Hasbro stroke Takara to bring him into the Transformers universe. This version in front of you is the pre-rub version. So this is 1984. He doesn't have the rub sign on his chest, which you can see. And if we have a quick look here, all these buttons are completely different. When we have a look at the later release in a second, you'll see that all this is fused. You'll also notice that the hinges for the tape deck are inside as well. Whereas any release after 1985, the hinges are attached to these buttons, which I'll show you in a second. So the figure itself, it used some die cast, which was brilliant. It stood quite tall. It was quite gangly. It did have good articulation, though. I mean, you've got movement in the shoulders, movement in the hips, top of the knees. You know, I mean, you can, it's hyper extending the knees, let's be honest, and it is part of the transformation. And same with the feet. But considering how old it is and how basic it is, moving at the bicep, obviously, it just looks really really good and because of obviously who it is and how much we love him from the comics and the cartoons i think he just looks stunning the accessories here on his shoulder and the weapon there also brilliantly double up as batteries which you can put in the back of there you can see there we've got this is the hasbro version so we've got the stamp on the outside of the battery cover again i'll be showing you the differences in a second between them so in fact yeah let's start off the reason why I've not transformed them is because, as you can see, we've got two boxed examples right there in front of us. So if I just move these down and then we'll have a look at them individually. So first and foremost, we've got Buzzor here. And the only way you could get him on the in the markets for Hasbro was with the actual boxed figure. He didn't come by himself at all. And whereas with this particular version, it came with Rumble. Um, I have put a frenzy in there just for a second, just so you can see how he would be packaged. So I'm going to take these down. For a second, we'll bring them here. So if we open up the Hasbro box, and if we have a look, carefully pull this out. There's Buzzor sitting there, and I'm gonna take out Soundwave, and I'm just gonna pop him right there. So we can hear all his accessories moving around. I'm gonna take out this particular version. By the way, the 17 was just its reference number. And again, this was before it went to D17 for Destrons, for Decepticons, or C for Autobots. Um, it was just its reference number, because again, it was one of the first. So if I slide this out, nice and careful, we'll have a look at the fantastic artwork and battle scenes in a second. I'm gonna take out this particular sound wave first and foremost. So what I was on about earlier, if we have a look here, so we've got the pre-rub, which has got the difference in the buttons there, you can see. Whereas the rub version, you can already see that that is all one piece. It's raised, it's protruding, and you can see that the hinge is now on the front of the cassette player, which again made it much easier and less likely to break. This one's just, yep, this one's fine. 
um, which you can see, but these do have a tendency to break really easily. Now, one of the other differences in, and I don't know, but I have just checked both of my Hasbro versions. This button here does not move for me at all. Whereas the Takara version, it does, it slides up and down. So that's one of the differences. The other difference is I pointed out in robot mode that the Hasbro version had the stamp. See on the battery cover there? Whereas the Takara version had the stamp, nice and careful, on the inside of the battery cover. Another main difference between the Takara and the Hasbro version, please don't break. I'm gonna leave that for two seconds. Oh no, there we go. Perfect, there we go. Another main difference between the two was of course the accessories. All of the springs were pretty much taken out. Let's get this, yeah, here we go. We're taken out of the weapon. So I've just took this out of the Hasbro one. Yeah, see, doesn't do anything at all. Whereas with the Takara versions, due to difference in difference licensing with toys and health and safety, etc. You can hear probably straight away when I load this, you can hear there's a spring in there. So there you go, they fired. So that was one of the big differences straight away with the Takara things. The other difference is, as I'm gonna show you this now nice and careful, if I can tilt this up without everything falling out, it came with all of these fantastic accessories, you know, just to keep it in line with the micro change. So the fact that it was a CD Walkman, are they all going to fall out? They might do. All right, so if I pull this guy here, we've got the headphones. We've got, that was the microphone that just fell out. So you'd obviously attach the microphone there. And then this bit, the only bit I'm actually missing is the wire. So the wire from these, which would attach into this bit and it would sit right on top of there. I will show you a picture because unfortunately I do not have it. So if I had the wire, it would look like that, which again is quite cool. And there he is with the cassette inside. So that's the main differences straight away with them. So you've got firing rockets and you've got the difference in the buttons there. But as I've just said, this is now, if you've got a reissue, if you've got the comic book reissue or any of the issues of Soundwave after 1985, yours will all look like that. And they will all have the hinges on the front which makes it much better because it doesn't really break it. The packaging obviously holds um, rumble as it would have been. That's obviously frenzy according to the boxes in the robot mode, whereas obviously the, the Hasbro boxes packed the figure in the cassette mode. I'm just going to pop these in here quickly. And then what we're going to do in a second, we're going to have a quick look at, in fact, I'll do it in a second because it's not good viewing, is it? What we're going to do, we're going to have a look at how the tapes are packaged so again this is the standard hasbro box there is a bit of yellowing this is mint on seal card they were packaged in twos like so let's spin this around see if there's a battle scene on the back no you just got the double tech specs on the back whereas with takara they were released either in these fantastic little boxes see this has got a d on it now so there we go d for destron 109 was its corresponding number You've got a little battle scene and then you've got just a little bit of a write up about him there. And he will, of course, inside have a little collector's card rather than if I pull all this out, all the tech specs and things like that. So here's his collector's card and some more information on him. But obviously we didn't have any of these with the Hasbro ones. There's the little instruction sheet as well. Let's just put that there for a second. And also... They were released on a card, but only individually. So there's an original laser beak just sealed on card. So they didn't do twin packs. They were just released like that. And there we go. D60, Destron 60 is his corresponding number. Right. Let's just have a quick look at some of the cassettes that came with him. There were some exclusive Japanese cassettes as well released uh, with the Headmasters range of figures in 1987, and I'm not yet lucky enough, unfortunately, to own any of them. They are on the wish list, and who knows, maybe I'll be lucky enough to get some of them eventually. So let's have a quick look. We've got, there's another buzzsaw there. And we've got Ratbat. I've got a memory blank. I'm going to come back to him in a second, because I've just forgot his name. 
we've got Slugfest, of course we've got Ravage, we've got Laserbeak, then we've got Rumble, sorry Frenzy, there's Overkill, and there of course again is Rumble. Right, Squawk Box, there we go, Squawk Box, I was just about to have a quick look, so we've got the combined form of two tapes there, one is Squawk Talk, one is Beast Box, and that is what they look like combined. Right, let's have a quick look at the actual artwork. There's Soundwave on the Hasbro box. And if we spin it around at the back, we've got the two tech specs. We've got the original battle scene, the 1984 battle scene, Optimus, Starscream, and then the tech specs for Buzzor and for Soundwave. I'll just pop that in there. Then on the Takara version, we've got slightly different. We've got the same for Soundwave, but obviously we've got the cassette robot down there rather than buzzer on his shoulder still looks really really good and then if we spin it round again we've got this lovely lovely battle scene on the back and then you've got the transformation process there as well and then the two write-ups right there as well there we go so again hugely popular character hope i was able to do him some justice for you guys and again just to point out some of the differences between the Hasbro and the Takara things. It's not always just the packaging. It usually is, but with this, there was many, many more accessories that came with him. So I hope you enjoyed looking at him. Hope you found it interesting and keep your ideas and suggestions coming forward and please take care. Thanks for watching. Like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.